In Unit 2, we explored a data communications model, different types of networks, and the Internet. From the previous unit, we looked at a simple communications model. As we go from source to destination, voltage shifts may occur and the transmitter will need to convert the incoming digital bitstream into an analog signal suitable for transmission. As the analog signal gets to its destination, the receiver will need to convert the analog signal back to the digital bitstream. In a telephone conversation, the sound waves from our voice are converted into electrical signals, but the signal will distort as it travels across the medium, causing the destination signal to not be exactly the same as the original signal since there are no attempts at correction or improvement of signal quality. The basic building block of any enterprise network infrastructure is the transmission line. Much of the technical detail of how information is encoded and transmitted across a line is of no real interest to the business manager. The manager is concerned with whether the particular facility provides the required capacity with acceptable reliability at a minimum cost. However, there are certain aspects of transmission technology that a manager must understand to ask the right questions and make informed decisions. One of the decisions a business user must make is a transmission medium. The two popular mediums driving data communications is fiber optic and wireless transmissions. Fiber optic communication transmits information from one place to another by sending pulses of infrared light through an optical fiber. It is cheap, has high capacity, and is difficult to tap, so it's more secure. Wireless communication involves no physical link established between two or more devices. Wireless signals are spread over in the air and are received and interpreted by appropriate antennas. It provides mobility for the user and allows a user to connect anytime and anywhere. Despite the growth in the capacity and the drop in cost of transmission facilities, transmission services remain the most costly component of a communications budget for most businesses. Multiplexing and compression are the two major approaches to greater efficiency. Multiplexing, also known as muxing, is where multiple analog or digital signals are combined into one signal over a shared medium. Compression is reducing the data so that a lower capacity, cheaper transmission facility can be used to meet a given demand. The estimate for 2016 is that there is over 20 billion fixed and mobile network devices. Because of the increase in the number of user devices, especially broadband devices, traffic volume is affected. It enables a user to be continuously consuming network capacity, as well as to be consuming capacity on multiple devices simultaneously. Different broadband devices enable different applications, which may have greater traffic generation capability. The result is that the total annual traffic generated over the internet and other IP-based networks is forecast to rise from 372 exabytes to 1.3 zettabytes in 2016. This demand and traffic will lead to stiff performance requirements on communication protocols and on communications and computer networks. A business need for a robust network to support voice, data, image, and video traffic is not confined to a single office building or LAN. Today, it is an enterprise-wide communication requirement. Luckily, advances in technology have allowed this integration to occur and increased capacity of networks to be able to support the different types of traffic. A wide area network, or WAN, spans a large geographical area, often a country or continent. 
They typically rely at least in part on circuits provided by one or more common carriers, which are companies that offer communication services to the public. Typically, a WAN consists of a number of interconnected switching nodes. A transmission from any device is routed through these internal nodes to a specified destination device. These nodes, including the boundary nodes, are not concerned with the content of the data. Rather, their purpose is to provide a switching facility that will move the data from node to node until they reach their destination. Traditionally, WANs have been implemented using either circuit switching or packet switching. Frame relay and ATM networks are also widely used, but gigabit ethernet and internet protocol technologies are slowly replacing them. A circuit switched network is a type of network where the communications between end devices or nodes must be set up first before they can communicate. A dedicated physical path or circuit has to be established first before communication can take place. An example of circuit switching is a telephone network. So in circuit switching, let's say we have you who want to talk to me. We must set up this physical dedicated connection first before we can even begin communicating. In a packet switching network, data is broken up into packets and sent independently from node to node from source to destination. The path each packet takes may be different, and the original message is reassembled at the destination. Computer to computer communications use a packet switching network. So if we take our example again of you wanting to talk to me, but this time, across a packet switching network. So we'll represent the network with a cloud. And we have several nodes within the network, which could be routers. This time, your voice data has to be broken up into smaller chunks called packets, which are represented by these squares. As each packet goes across this packet switching network, it is passed from node to node. So one packet may take this path like so to reach me. Another packet may take this path down here like so to reach me. So each path may differ. Then when the packets get to the destination, they must be reassembled because they may be out of order. Frame Relay is a packet switching wide area network technology designed for cost efficient data transmission for intermittent traffic between local area networks and between endpoints in wide area networks. It was developed to take advantage of high data rates and low error rates. Frame Relay networks are designed to operate efficiently at user data rates of up to 2 megabits per second rather than the original packet switching networks at a data rate of about 64 kilobits per second. Frame Relay achieves these high data rates by stripping out most of the overhead involved with error control. Asynchronous transfer mode, also known as cell relay, can be viewed as an evolution from frame relay. The main difference between frame relay and Asynchronous transfer mode, or ATM, is that frame relay uses variable length packets called frames, and ATM uses fixed length packets called cells. As with frame relay, ATM provides little overhead for error control because of the reliability of the transmission system and the ability of the systems to catch and correct errors. By using a fixed packet length, the processing overhead is reduced even further for ATM compared to frame relay. Local area networks, generally called LANs, are privately owned networks within a single building or campus of up to a few kilometers in size. They are widely used to connect personal computers and workstations in company offices and factories to share resources 
for example, printers, and exchange information. The internal data rates of LANs are typically much greater than those of WANs, and the most common configurations are switched LANs and wireless LANs. The Internet evolved from the ARPANET, which was developed in 1969 by the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA, of the U.S. Department of Defense. It was the first operational packet switching network. ARPANET began operations in four locations. Today, the number of hosts is in the hundreds of millions, the number of users in the billions, and the number of countries participating nearing 200. The number of connections to the internet continues to grow exponentially. Because of its success, ARPA applied the same packing, packet switching technology to tactical radio communication called packet radio and to satellite communication called SatNet. Since these three networks operated in very different communication environments, the problem was how to integrate these networks. The solution eventually became what we know of as the Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol or TCP IP protocol suite. The key elements that comprise the Internet include hosts, the network, and routers. The purpose of the Internet is to interconnect end systems called hosts, which include PCs, workstations, servers, mainframes, and others. Most hosts that use the Internet are connected to a network, such as a local area network or a wide area network. These networks are in turn connected by routers. Each router attaches to two or more networks. Some hosts, such as mainframes or servers, connect directly to the router rather than through a network. The Internet today is made up of thousands of overlapping hierarchical networks. Thus, it's difficult to describe the exact architecture or topology of the Internet. A key element of the Internet is the set of hosts attached to it. A host is essentially a computer. Today, computers can include mobile phones and even cars. All of these can be hosts on the Internet. Hosts are sometimes grouped together in a LAN, which is a typical configuration in a corporate environment. Individual hosts and LANs are connected to an Internet Service Provider, or ISP, through a Point of Presence, or POP. The connection is made in a series of steps, starting with the Customer Premises Equipment, or CPE. The CPE is a communications equipment located on-site with the host. This slide summarizes the key terminology used to describe the Internet, some of which was already explained in the previous slide. The figure shows some of the typical communications and network elements in use today. At the center of the figure is an IP backbone network circled here. This could represent a portion of the internet or an enterprise IP network. Typically, the backbone consists of high-performance routers called core routers interconnected with high-volume optical links. At the periphery of an IP backbone are routers that provide connectivity to external networks and users. These routers are sometimes referred to as edge routers which are used within an enterprise network to connect a number of routers and switches to external resources, such as an IP backbone or a high-speed WAN. The upper part of the figure, circled here, depicts a portion of what might be a large enterprise network. Two sections of the network connected via a private high-speed asynchronous transfer mode, or ATM, WAN, with switches interconnected with optical links. In the lower left of the figure, what we see is what might be configuration for a small or medium-sized 
business, which relies on an Ethernet LAN configuration. The lower portion of the figure also shows an individual residential Wi-Fi network where the residential user connected to an internet service provider through some sort of subscriber connection, such as a digital subscriber line or DSL, which provides a high-speed link over telephone lines and requires a special DSL modem. Finally, mobile devices, such as smartphones and tablets, can connect to the internet through the public cellular network which has a high-speed connection, typically optical, to the internet as well. In summary, we looked at different transmission mediums, trends in data communications, convergence, types of networks, and the internet and how it was formed.